So in this talk, I'm going to consider the relationship between the gradient vector and directional derivatives. Okay, before we go on, can you can you quickly remind me of like what, a one line description of what gradient vector means and what directional derivative means? Gradient vector is just the derivative of a function. Derivative of the function, except now since you have a function of multiple variables, the derivative will be a vector. Mm -hmm. So it will capture both a magnitude and a direction. Right? The gradient vector, if it's non-zero, has a direction to it, and it also has a magnitude. Uh, and what what was the directional derivative? What does that say? The derivative uh, on a particular direction. Along a particular direction. And in order to in order to say a directional derivative, you need to specify the direction, which you do using a unit vector. So in our setup, f is a function of a vector variable, u is a unit vector along which we'll try to take directional derivatives, and a is a point in the domain of the function. Okay, let's say that the, so now suppose the gradient vector of f exists at a. What kind of a creature is this? It's a vector. It's a vector. Okay. In the same dimensions as this. And so u is also a vector in n dimensions. This is also a vector in n dimensions. Okay. So now the claim is that the directional derivative of f in the direction of u at the point a is so what is this this thing going to be? This is a number. It's just a it's just a scalar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the claim is that this scalar is the dot product of these two vectors. The so the vector, the unit vector along which we are doing the differentiation, dotted with the gradient vector. Okay, what, what am I really trying to say? Can you can you interpret this? Uh, the dot product. So, okay, well, what, what I'm saying is, we yeah. only want the, the elements that has something to do with our union vector to we be. Wa we the want uh, so so this is representing in some sense the overall direction and magnitude of change of f at at the point a. Mm -hmm. We are interested in the component of that change, which is along the unit vector u. U is a unit vector. Right, so to get to take the component of a vector along a unit vector, you can just take the dot product with the unit vector, mm -hmm. and that component is going to to describe the directional derivative. Okay. What's another way of thinking of it? Well, the gradient vector describes sort of the magnitude. The magnitude of the gradient vector is describing how quickly the function is changing. The direction of the gradient vector is describing the direction along which the change is concentrated. And this is really saying this dot product is is sort of measuring two things. One is it's measuring how much how much this is, right? Mm -hmm. The other is it's measuring how how closely related this is to this direction. Okay, I'll just take this in a in a couple more forms, then I'll come back to some of the things I said. Uh, if you want to do this at a generic point, so you can write the generic point version. There, instead of choosing a point A, you just think of these as functions. So the directional derivative now becomes a scalar function. U is still a constant, and this now becomes a vector valued function. So we are saying that this scalar function is the dot product of, of the unit vector U and the vector valued function. You can also say it in point free notation. What would you how would you put it in point free notation? Yeah? Point free. Meaning just you don't write the point uh -huh. where you're doing the evaluation. What okay. does it say? D sub V. U. That's U. Oh, D sub U. Mm -hmm. F mm -hmm. equals to U dot, dot nebula F. Dot the gradient of it, yes. Okay, great. So now I want to come back to something I was saying here. Let's say 
Let's just assume we are in two dimensions, so the input vector is two dimensional, just to make the picture easier. If the gradient vector of f at this point is in this direction, okay? And now I want to differentiate, the, I want to take the directional derivative along this direction, and suppose these are perpendicular. What's the gradient vector going to be? Sorry, what's the directional derivative going to be? Zero. Zero. So the directional derivative will be zero along any direction perpendicular to the gradient vector because the dot product in that case would be zero. If you're taking the directional derivative along some direction like this, which is, can you zoom in to this one? Uh -huh. Take the directional derivative along any direction which is sort of like this or this or something which is partially in this direction, then, then that directional derivative will be non-zero and it captures sort of how close these vectors are. Okay. Let me write it down in the in the angle notation. So this what what would the what would it be in terms of cosine? So it would be the length of the gradient vector times what? The length of u. Length of u is one. Oh it's one. U is a unit vector. So cosine cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between gradient vector and the unit vector. Yeah. Now, this, uh, there's one situation where this where this interpretation doesn't work. That's when the gradient vector is zero. If the gradient vector is zero, then the directional derivative is zero in all directions. Right? If the gradient vector is non-zero, on the other hand, the directional derivative will be zero only in the directions which are perpendicular to the gradient vector. Mm -hmm. And it and the closer the given direction is to the direction of the gradient vector, the larger the directional derivative. Okay. So what's the direction in which the directional derivative will be maximum? Well, it's just the direction of the gradient vector. Yes. Again, if the gradient vector is zero, none of this applies. Uh, what 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 if it is the opposite direction of that would be the minimum or the maximum negative, right? Yeah. That's what I was about to say. Uh, is everything captured? Yeah. It will in fact be negative of the original value, and it's so minimum being minimum here means maximum in negative magnitude along the direction of negative. So, so this tells you that the direction of the gradient vector is the direction of change. It's a direction along which the function is changing. If you move anything orthogonal to that direction, the function is sort of locally not changing, or the rate of change is zero. Okay? And the maximum change occurs along the direction, the minimum, which just means maximum negative, happens opposite the uh, 